Hello and welcome to lesson two in this course where the primary focus is going to be sculpting a female hairstyle. But before I jump into that, let's go over the ear and how to sculpt it properly. So we'll jump back into sculpt mode with our sculpt head selected. Let's turn on a dynamic topology where a detail size of 20 should do well. Let's turn on collapse short edges to keep our topology even. And the first thing I want to do with the inflate brush is to push, um, well, pretty much the entire mass in a little bit to make it concave. So let's start doing that, just lightly pressing in, smoothing that out, maybe a little bit more. There we go, about like that. And then increase the strength of our brush a lot to push in the auditory canal which is the main hole um, that goes uh, into the eardrum. So holding control, let's start pushing that in. And we want it to go in at an angle, also be very deep. So going into wireframe, we can see how deep that's going. Let's go a little bit further. I think that'll be fine. And now once we have the hole, we can start to add the helix. So with my inflate brush, the helix is the part of the ear that starts right about here and kind of curls around the edge of the ear all the way down. And the inflate brush works really well for that part. There we go. And have it terminate about at the center of our ear near the canal. And then let's go back over it on the inside edge where I want to push in like this. And I'll stop um, before I get to the earlobe down there. But I want to thin out this area and make the helix hook over towards the interior of our um, ear. Yeah, I think that works out. And now I can start to add the anti-helix. And this is sort of a Y letter shape. It starts like this with my inflate brush. Let's bring it down. And then add another branch off this way. Then smoothing in between both branches. And on this side we have the anti-helical fold. So let's um, increase the volume there. Also push down to better emphasize that fold. There we go, that's a good start. And continue down, inflating more and more uh, the further down that we go, because as you can see in the reference, the curvature of the helix and the anti-helix are not parallel. So we need to match that over here in our sculpture. I'm going to turn off collapse short edges for a brief moment and continue pushing this out, which also tightens the gap in between. There we go. And then I'll manually pull it out um, with the grab brush, pushing in at the top and then pulling the anti-helix out. There we go. It's not too bad. It's perhaps a little bit too far out. Let's push it um, in, the whole ear in a little bit. There we go. Now we'll turn collapse short edges back on and inflate the helix up a bit more. And at the base of the anti-helix, uh, we'll follow that out back towards the canal where it becomes the antitragus that is opposite of the tragus that forms this kind of horseshoe shape. So right here is the antitragus and right here is the tragus and that little ridge curves right around there and forms this little point that we see in our reference right there. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And all that's left is the ear lobe, where I will inflate it just a bit, give it a little more mass. And then um, with a crease brush, I'm going to follow this crease in between the helix and anti-helix and follow that out towards the base of the ear lobe. 
give that a subtle indention uh, that we can see over there in our artwork. It could probably do with a little bit more polish, but in general, that is the anatomy of the ear and how to achieve that shape. Let's see, perhaps I can increase the indentions right in here with my inflate brush. And the ear uh, is often overlooked, I feel like, when it comes to modeling and sculpting because it's not a prominent feature, but it's pretty obvious when it's not done correctly. So it's um, really not that difficult to achieve the ear, but it does require um, a little bit more effort than I think some people are willing to put in. All right, now it's time for the hair. So jump into object mode and let's go ahead and smooth the normals. There we go. That's not too bad. And for the hair, we'll add another mesh UV sphere to start off with and move that above the head into position. We can name it Sculpt Hair. Jump back to uh, Sculpt mode on this new object. Enable Dynamic, make sure Collapse Short Edges is on, and Detail Size will change back to 30 to begin. And with the inflate brush at a very high strength, let's start pushing in this mass back in towards the head so that we can see our face. And smooth out around there until it um, kind of matches the curvature of the top of our head. There we go, just a nice blob of geometry to start this off. And immediately I will turn off um, X symmetry because this is going to be um, completely asymmetrical. And first thing I want to do is cut the hair part. So with my crease brush, let's start um, cutting that right there off to one side of the head. And then with the pinch brush, I will lock the Z axis so it only pinches in X and Y. Let's pull that together which isn't doing what I want. So instead of that, I'll just use the grab brush and pull them together. There we go. So kind of the start of a hair part at least. And now I can grab the snake hook brush to begin pulling out our hair locks. So what I'm going for is sort of this octopus looking attachment to the top of our head. And then we can refine from there. So starting from the side, I'm just going to um, pull out the first lock. Let's pull it down like this, maybe off to the side, give it a little bit of a hook, something like that, smooth it at the end. And actually what would work best for this is if I switch our curve. So instead of this default S curve, let's choose the linear curve instead. That way our um, locks get skinnier as I pull them down. So let's go for another one. That one wasn't very good. Let's try it again. There we go, sort of down and around the front of the shoulder. Perhaps I can increase the um, detail size of my dynamic topology to 20. All right, so I think that that looks pretty good for um, a pair of locks falling down over the shoulder. Now there will be a part in the hairstyle and we'll have uh, other locks falling down the back. And uh, I must be using the grab brush instead of the snake hook, which I am. Let's try that again. That's more like it. Let's pull down another one. And I need to give this one a little bit more volume. So with my inflate brush, let's lock the Z and Y axes so that it only um, grows laterally. Yeah, just like that. Now let's continue around uh, unlocking all my axes, jumping back to the snake hook brush to pull down the rest of my locks.
And now that I've got those pulled out, it's a good beginning to the hairstyle. But I need to push all this extra geometry back and away from um, our head. So with my inflate brush, I'll continue pushing those back. And let's see, I took that time to sculpt the ear and it's completely hidden. So how about we bring that back and make our hairstyle pull back behind the ear. Yeah, more like that. There we go. That's starting to complete the female look. And how about one more lock of hair that will serve as the bangs sweeping over our forehead. And there we go. That's uh, our hair structure base. Now we can begin refining. And the first step in the refining process, I like to use the flatten or the polish brush. And with this, we will uh, define the hair flow and the direction that our locks will be growing. So we'll start by flattening um, the bang section and then make another stroke uh, parallel to it and another just going row by row sculpting in the direction that I want the hair to flow. And I need to push um, the hair mass back so it's not penetrating with the um, face. There we go, more like that. And continue with the polish brush, defining the hair growth pattern. And the basic principle of hair, you'll notice that I always start from the part and pull out from it to the side because that's the way that uh, hair grows out of that scalp and then splits to go one way or the other. And gradually each radiates from the part so that we get hair growth all from the same area, like this. There we go. And um, as I flatten, you can see that we get ridges in between my strokes. And this is how we can begin to create the um, various strands and cuts in the hairstyle, which probably doesn't make sense right now, but um, I'll show you what I mean in a little bit once I finish flattening out all of these flow strokes. Yeah, and we're starting to get a definite flow to our hairstyle. So I will finish up this um, pass with the polish brush by time-lapsing it, since it's very repetitive. And now we're ready for another level of refinement where we need to better sell the idea that this mass of geometry is actually made up of individual hair strands. So it's going to be an illusion, obviously, but if done correctly, it can uh, definitely sell it. So for this, I'm going to use the clay strips brush, which somehow I managed to always delete. It must be deleted in my um, start.blend file. But anyway, we'll create a new brush, select the default brush, hit the plus button, We'll rename this Clay Strips. 
And then in the brush menu down here, let's change the, uh, let's see, sculpt tool to be clay strips. And let's change our detail size of dynamic topology to a level of 10. And what this is going to be great for, if I just make strokes mimicking the flow of the hair, one after the next, we can start to see that the overlapping ridges create the illusion of hair strands. So we're going to continue doing that all the way around our head, pushing some in and pushing some out, varying the strength also, keeping in mind that the purpose is to define or to further define the flow of the hair. All right, so um, that's pretty good for that side, but it might be tricky to do the hair as it falls behind the ear. So let's work on that. This part can actually be a lot of fun using the clay strips because it's very gestural. There we go. I think that's selling it fairly well. Let's continue down into this lock, making a bunch of strokes all the way around to make it feel like a bunch of different strands are clumping together. Now let's move on to the back side and I'll go ahead and speed up the rest of this process.
All right, so now that we have strands implied over the entire hair mesh, I want to take it one step further in refinement, which will involve cutting a lot of strokes to better emphasize the hair flow and also the strand nature. So for that, I'll use the crease brush and also turn on smooth strokes, which can be found under the stroke menu. Let's enable that and also enable dynamic topology with a detail size of 10. All right, so with the crease brush and smooth stroke enabled, this gives me much more control over the stroke itself. With this off, it's much easier to do jagged lines, but with this on, it kind of lags the stroke behind my um, mouse cursor, which results in a much smoother stroke. So I can use that now to better emphasize some of the strands that we've implied with our flatten and clay tubes brush. So I'll cut some of them in and push some of them out. But let's uh, dial the strength back a bit. There we go. Maybe cut a larger one in here. Yeah, just like that. I want to um, better distinguish this lock from the next one. So I'll continue doing this for a few more um, strokes. So that you can get a feel for what I'm trying to go for. We'll push this next one out. Yeah, I think that's helping. And now we've got this extra depth in our hairstyle. Whereas if we look at this side, it's pretty much flat all the way around. But then with these extra strokes that I've just made, it gives more dimension to the hair, which I think uh, looks better. And once I've done this uh, to this particular area, I'll go back and draw a few more, mainly at the roots and at the tips of each lock of hair. So right here in the part, let's turn off smooth stroke and I want to make several small cuts along the lock, starting at the root, and that's a little bit too powerful. Tile that back. We'll make a cut there, then make another one beside it, varying the lengths of the stroke a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then over here at the end of the lock, we'll do the same thing. Now let's move to this other one and repeat the process. At the end, make two cuts, or however many I can fit in. I think that looks pretty good. And do the same up here at the roots. There we go. By cutting additional strands in the roots and the tips, both of these locks look more like they're made up of individual strands. And once I do the entire head, that will further help sell the idea that the hair mesh is made up of strands and not just a huge blob of geometry. So the pinch brush is great for making these creases a little bit finer. And perhaps for this second lock here, I'll make a cut a little bit longer instead of isolating it at the tip or the root. It's okay to cut another one more lengthwise. There we go. It breaks up that lock and isn't so flat in that area. Yeah, there we go. Now let's continue this into the next lock, starting at the root and cutting several creases in here. There we go. Yeah, that really finishes off those locks and it creates a nice style for this sculpted hair, which uh, can be sometimes a challenge because it is one solid piece of geometry, but we're trying to give the impression that it's made up of individual strands. But I like the results of this technique. So I'm going to finish up cutting these fine strand indentions all the way around the hairstyle.
Okay, let's take a look at our completed hairstyle. And even though it is gestural, and we know that, uh, of course, it's not made up of individual strands, I still think the idea is conveyed successfully and with appeal. So uh, I hope you've learned something about shape, form, and uh, even anatomy of the female face, and also how you can complete a bust by sculpting an appealing hairstyle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.